This week's nut jobs of the week are all of the unpatriotic CEOs whining like restless children that their guy didn't win. I wouldn't care normally, but in some instances, their idiocy has real-world costs associated with it, so let me explain. This guy is Papa John CEO Joe Schnatter. Faced with having to cover more of the wage slaves, I mean workers, he has at his pizza places with health care, he told us he was faced with a conundrum. I'll either lay people off or have to raise the cost of a pizza. How much? 11 to 14 cents. Wow. Sounds so terrible. Which did he choose to do? He said he will likely reduce workers' hours to get around paying for their health care. Of the two options he poses, the more ethical approach is passing that minuscule cost off to the consumer. But he's being disingenuous because he doesn't even have to do that. According to Aaron E. Carroll of CNN, the cost paid by Papa John's for the food products they need to make a pizza fluctuate up and down by 1 or 2% all the time. And they don't bitch or pass the cost off for a pepperoni shortage, for example. And 1% is what we're talking about for the cost of health care. Furthermore, Papa John's, as of 2010, had $1,126,397,000 in revenues, and they enjoy a corporate tax rate less than that of the income tax rate paid by a worker in the U.S. making $50,000 a year. And in September 2012, Papa John's opened restaurant number 4,000, and to celebrate, the restaurant was in New Hyde Park, New York, but to celebrate, they gave away 4,000 free pizzas. The cost of that was $47,960 that they gave away for free. But you can't give your workers health care. So this isn't a problem with Obamacare. Papa John's CEO is just an asshole. This guy is David Siegel, Westgate Resort's founder and CEO. He says, quote, if any new taxes are levied on me or my company, as our current president plans, I will have no choice but to reduce the size of this company. So he uses the words no choice, and those are strong words. He must have hit a rough patch in his business, right? Or maybe he needed another loan from the bank or something to keep his business afloat. <laughs> of course not. In 2007, Forbes estimated he was worth $1 billion dollars. He claims he's worth $1.8 billion, but to be fair, this was before the recession, so now he is worth possibly as little as $400 million, so my heart bleeds for him. I hope he'll get by without food stamps. He also starred in a documentary about making the biggest house in America for him and his family to live in. It's worth about $75 million. There's a 20-car garage, 6 pools, 13 bedrooms, 22 bathrooms, 10 kitchens, and 90,000 square feet. The documentary is called Queen of Versailles. David is threatening to fire people because the marginal income tax rate might be raised under Obama from 35% to 39.6%, which is what it was under Bill Clinton. So again, let's be clear. There's no problem with the policy. This guy is just an asshole. God forbid he has to move into the U.S.'s second biggest house, or third or seventh biggest house. The horror. And lastly, this guy is Robert Murray, CEO of Murray Energy, and the only person who actually has laid people off already. Why? He said he has to because of Obama's coming war on coal. If you're thinking war on coal, that's probably BS, you would be correct. In West Virginia, Virginia, and Ohio, coal jobs are either higher or at the same level as four years ago. But just as bad as firing people based on the fantasy land in his head, it turns out under Obama, coal employment has not only expanded, but hit a 15-year high last November. And by the way, Murray forced his employees to go to a Romney rally and be in a photo op with Romney, even though many of them are not Republicans. 
and he even docked them their day's pay when they were there. This guy must think we live in Soviet Russia or North Korea or a feudal society. So yet again, no problem with Obama or his policies. This guy is just a dumbass and an asshole. So all of these guys are your unpatriotic nut jobs of the week for caring more about personal greed than their workers who are the United States of America.